What's going on, y'all? This is Damien with the DevSec Blueprint with another video. And in today's video, what I'm gonna be discussing or talking about is how to pass the AWS Certified DevOps Professional Certification Exam, as in, a lot to say, in a matter of 60 days, right? So in this particular video, what I'm gonna be talking about is really my experience taking this certification exam as well as some of the resources that I've used, whether or not I went into the testing center, and also just tips and tricks on how to cultivate your study plan to where you can effectively ace the certification within a certain amount of time, which would be about roughly two months. I'm also gonna talk about my experience as well, because I believe that my experience, in addition to me obtaining a plethora of other AWS certifications has helped me in a lot of areas when preparing for this exam. So I'll be sure to touch on that for y'all. But before we get into actually talking about everything related to this certification, please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Let me know your thoughts. Also, let me know what it is that you want to see from this channel. And if you have any ideas about any videos you'd like to see me talk about or any technical things you would like to see me do, go on ahead and post that as well. All right. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right. So before we get into actually explaining my study schedule and some of the tools and resources that I've used to prepare for this exam, let's really talk about what this exam is and let me give you guys a brief overview of this exam right so ops engineer professional is an exam that is intended for individuals who perform a devops engineering role so the key thing about this exam is that it validates a candidate's technical expertise in provisioning operating and managing distributed systems and services on aws it also says that the exam also validates a candidate's ability to complete the following task. Number one, implement and manage continuous delivery systems and methodologies in AWS, which is super important. You're also going to be implementing and automating security controls, governance processes, and compliance validation using some of the services within AWS and defining deploying metrics, logging systems, mostly everything that you're going to be doing in this exam or learning about doing when you're studying for this exam is really gonna benefit you in creating highly scalable and fault tolerant, continuous delivery and continuous integration systems that have security controls in place to be able to secure them while also being highly available for your applications or whatever it is that you're trying to do to be deployed correctly within AWS. And ultimately, that's exactly what it is that we want to learn by taking this exam. And it's something that we have to accomplish, right? Or we want to accomplish with the knowledge that we've obtained when we study for said exam. So in addition to what we talked about in the exam guide, let's talk a little bit about the exam itself, as far as the level, length, cost, format, and also the delivery method. So with this exam, it is a professional level exam, and it is one of the hardest of the professional level exams, in my opinion, compared to the Solutions Architect Professional. The length of this exam, it takes about 180 minutes to complete, or you get 180 minutes to complete the exam. It costs about $300 or US dollars. And the format of the exam, it is 75 questions. So it's either multiple choice or multiple response, you're most likely gonna experience more multiple response than anything. And then the delivery method, the good thing about this exam is that you can either take it at a testing center or you can take it online. So now that you guys have a fundamental understanding of what the exam is and have a little bit of an idea of how much it costs and so on and so forth, let's talk a little bit about the prerequisites, right? So. You got to understand that this exam is very, very difficult, and I don't recommend any beginner in AWS to take this exam at all. Before I took this exam, I sat and I achieved the AWS Solutions Architect, the AWS Developer Associate, and the Security Specialty. 
And I feel like all three of those exams that I take combined, plus my experience with me being a cloud security engineer throughout the day, helped me really propel and ace this exam with the amount of experience that I've got, plus the conceptual knowledge and theories that I understand when it comes to, you know, building things in AWS and really following the six pillars of the AWS well-architected framework. So if I were you, I would encourage you to get one of the following certifications to help you pass this exam. It'll be A, the Solutions Architect Associate, or B, the AWS Certified Developer Associate. And those two exams, whether you get one or the other or both will really help you prepare for taking this exam. Not to mention, you also wanna make sure that you actually have some type of experience with building things in AWS before you sit for this exam. So those are the things that I would recommend before you even think about or before you sit for this exam. So now that we got the prereqs out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the resources that I used. So the first resource that I used to help me pass the certification exam is the AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional 2024 course in Udemy created by Stefan Marek, right? And I would say that if anything, I've used Stefan Marek since I started my cloud journey within AWS to pass all of my certifications. And one thing that he does really well is explain every concept and he's very detailed, concise, and he continues to just, I mean, he's just amazing. I'm just gonna say that outright. He's just amazing and he has a really good way of explaining things and translating that information to you. So he can break down those concepts really, really well. So I'd highly recommend you take a look at that course, purchase it if you can, and just get right into it. It's only about 20 hours worth and the majority of the course in itself is hands-on. So you're gonna be building right along with him in your own account or your own sandbox environment within AWS to really get an understanding of how these services work that you're gonna be tested over. The second resource that I would highly recommend you take a look at, because it's free, is the cheat sheets that are created by Tutorials Dojo. So these cheat sheets are super consumable because it's all bulleted like it's all listed in bullet point style and all of the various different concepts are summarized per service and they even have practice exams as well which i highly recommend you also look into and purchase because those practice exams kind of mimic the questions that you would see on the actual exam so it's very on par if not harder than the DevOps professional. So take a look into those resources or take a look into those practice exams and cheat sheets as well, because let me tell you, the Stefan Mark and the Tutorial Dojo combo is a combo for success or a combination for being able to really knock that exam out the park and pass it. So I would highly recommend you look into those two resources. So now that I've talked about the resources that I use and why I used them, let me talk a little bit about my study schedule and how much time I committed to really studying for the certification, right? So within the first 30 days, on weekdays specifically, I would spend at most two hours a day studying for the certification by taking the course. So I took Stefan Merrick's course and although it's 20 hours, it took me the complete 30 days to finish the course completely and take the practice exam at the end. On weekends, I'd basically double that time. So if I spent two hours a day or every night on a weekday, I basically spend four hours on weekends to get through the course material, take notes, take effective notes, and also do some of the labs that he had within the course and just also practice a little bit by building some of the things that I wanted to on my own, right? Letting my curiosity run and wander and build whatever it is I want to build by using some of the services that were targeted for the exam, right? After I completed that, and this is after I completed the course content or material after 30 days, I then moved on over into 
the tutorial dojo's cheat sheets, right? So I started to review the cheat sheets for the selected services and basically write that or fill in the gaps between my notes that I took from the course and really started to identify some of the gaps in my knowledge so that I can go back and review the video that Stefan Merrick had posted or that, you know, was included within his course. So I started to do that and I was also taking practice exams and I take a practice exam twice or three times a week. So there will be, you know, one day practice exam and it'll be about three hours the next day, review the practice exam and go back, review my notes, make updates to the notes. Then the next day, take another practice exam. And these practice exams are the ones from Tutorial Dojo that I'm taking. So I did that consistently for the next 30 days up into the final day before I took the exam and I was able to pass it. Okay, so when it comes to the exam and based on my knowledge and expertise, these were the following services that I would just put a little bit more emphasis on before you go and you sit for your exam because I'm pretty sure you're gonna see something about these, right? So first a service that I'm gonna recommend is CloudFormation. Then we got Code Build, Code Pipeline, Code Deploy, Code Star, really everything Code Star you definitely wanna learn. You wanna know a little bit more about the deployment strategy. So the difference between green deployment, rolling deployment, et cetera, et cetera. There's system manager, patch manager, session manager is two key features of systems manager that I definitely think you really need to focus on. There's API gateway, Lambda. Lambda is very, very common. Definitely gonna be tested on that. Kinesis data streams, Kinesis firehose. There's inspector, organizations, surprisingly control tower and then guard duty so all right so before we wrap this video up i'm going to talk about the last thing on my list of things to talk to y'all about and that is my testing experience so just to mention this i go to the testing center to take all of my certification tests i don't do them at home and i never will simply because i don't feel like i perform at my best when taking the exam at home so I went to the testing center to take my exam. The testing center that I usually go to is the one that I frequent. It's always nice. It's very quiet. They give us noise canceling headphones. It's definitely just overall my all time favorite testing center. Now, the second thing is that I did not hydrate nor did I eat before I took this exam. So when I walked out of this exam thinking that I was definitely going to fail, I had this really, really terrible headache. So if there's anything that you take away from this, Definitely make sure you hydrate, eat plenty of carbs and avoid coffee because I definitely had coffee, but didn't eat and didn't hydrate. <laughs> so I will say this as far as the exam is concerned. Three hours is enough time for you to get through it. However, you really need to make sure that you pace yourself because out of the 75 questions that I was able to review once I finished, I was only able to review maybe 20 because I only had 10 minutes left at the end of the exam. Not to mention, one thing I want y'all to understand is that these questions are going to be exceptionally detailed. And that is one thing that I did not expect from this professional level exam is that is the amount of detail and thoroughness each question had. So if there's anything that I really, really, really would emphasize is make sure you practice process of elimination and time management when you're taking your practice exams with Tutorials Dojo because it's going to help you prioritize your time and help you not waste time on questions that could potentially eat up all your time, right? But overall, I would say that the exam was it was really good. It was challenging, but I felt that on my end, I could have been a lot better at preparing my body to endure such trauma. <laughs> and that concludes this video, y'all. Thank you so much for your continued support and thank you for watching. Please make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and also comment in the section below, letting me know if you learned something or if you found this video helpful or valuable at all. 
If you know anybody who's looking to get this certification, please make sure you send this video to them. I definitely think it could be of much benefit to your friends. And I cannot wait to see you all in the next video. Thank you.